Hello, Waypoint Partners. My name is Tim Cole, and I work with Waypoint uh, Church Partners as the Executive Director, and we are here to help you navigate ministry together. And this season that we're in here, mid to late summer, as we're getting ready to for schools to reopen has created a new opportunity for us to create a 10 in 10 video, 10 ideas in 10 minutes or less about how your church can capitalize on the opportunity to support and serve and empower parents and teachers and students as a schools are supposed to reopen or have some kind of plan for at home schooling versus uh, on location schooling as schools start. And uh, we uh, have a 35 minute webinar uh, that we did with a panel uh, here earlier that uh, will be in the link in the description to this if you'd like to hear more about this topic. But I'd like to give you 10 creative ideas that churches in our region offered to us about how they're trying to capitalize on this opportunity uh, to help parents and teachers and students during this time. So if you're ready, uh, 10 ideas in 10 minutes, here we go. My first idea is is a very simple, but doesn't go without saying, is to uh, have meetings with the people uh, that you're trying to serve. Ask them what they need. Don't assume what they, what they need or what they don't need, but meet with your teachers and administrators, meet with your parents, even meet with your students, your high schoolers or, or junior high kids and ask them, what do you need that we might be able to help you with? And so the, that's the first idea of the Town South Church in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, uh, so that they're having a meeting soon uh, to ask that question in and of itself. Another thing that's pretty critical is as you do that, don't forget to leverage any existing relationships you have with entities that serve parents and teachers. Uh, and students. And so that could be, uh, for example, uh, the Boys and Girls Club or the YMCA or um, other groups like the Salvation Army. And if you've got a relationship with them, you can partner with them, ask them what they need so you don't have to recreate the wheel. And uh, so you can call them and ask them, well, how could we do that? The Woodland Hills uh, Church in, uh, in Abingdon is, is uh, serving uh, the Boys and Girls Club in the community by, by providing an all day place rather than just an after school place. Uh, for the Boys and Girls Club to host the kids while the parents are at work. Uh, so as you, if you have a building, one of the things that you can do, uh, of course, is to provide just a hangout or a social space for kids to have uh, to come and get away from the Zoom call that they'll be on uh, for quite a bit of time if they're doing at-home learning, depending on what your uh, school system is requiring. And so you can let the parents know that from this time to this time, we're going to have supervised areas for your kids to come hang out. They might be able to do video games or uh, or other kind of planned activities or just hang out time. The reverse side of that is to provide uh, tutored staff learning space for your kids to where parents who have to go to work, uh, maybe whether it's full-time or part-time, know that their kids will can be dropped off and that they will be getting their work done on Zoom. And uh, so you can uh, focus on making sure the parents are confident their kids are going to be on track for that. One thing that you can also do is adjust your school supplies program to at-home learning. There's a lot of churches these days that about this time of year start a big backpack program or school supply program, but to adjust that for at-home learning is a key thing that, that you can advertise to your parents uh, that you're going to be doing. And so you can uh, provide a toolkit for uh, home, homework or homeschooling. Uh, and that would be a little bit different from what the kids might have at school. Uh, or you can, uh, you can have a party where parents would pick up their supplies for their kids at home, but, that, but also schedule that at such a time that there's stuff for the kids to do when new parents pick that up, not just a drive-by pickup, but that there would be an ice cream truck like Cherry Avenue Church or, or uh, water games or other things, uh, ch sidewalk chalk for the kids to do to get out of the house and have a good half hour, an hour of fun while the parents are picking up their uh, goods for the school year starting. I also like uh, the opportunity that the New Hope Church in, in Roanoke uh, talked about is, is praying for the parents and the teachers as they pick up their, their backpack, let them know that the school is, is the school and the parents and teachers are being prayed for actively by you and your church. Another thing that we saw a couple of churches, uh, the Area 10 Church in Richmond and the Journey Church in Springfield uh, in Northern Virginia is providing some uh, homeschooling training for parents who are not normal homeschoolers, uh, that they, whether it's teachers that are providing the training or homeschooled parents who are accustomed to teaching their kids at home to provide some, whether it's in person or online training, kind of a one-on-one uh, primer for parents, uh, 
oh, the, during the May, uh, the March and April and May timeline when this all got thrust on us all of a sudden, I think a lot of parents were pretty discouraged on how that scene went. And you're kind of hoping that when school restarts in August or September, that the homeschooling deal is going to be a whole lot better. And so your church can lead the way and say, okay, we're going to give you uh, an hour's worth of a webinar or a training or, or even every Monday night. Uh, for the next four nights, we're going to have an online a platform where you can ask questions, be taught some skills to make sure your kids are being taught well during this time. So I think that's a that's a great idea. One thing that's critical all this is how are people going to know about the opportunity you have, that your church has a tremendous opportunity to reach out and tell parents and teachers that might not ever come to your church currently. Uh, so you've got to create a social media campaign uh, that lets them know. So there can be a little Facebook ad or videos that you could post and can get shared by the people in your church. So other parents would know that you're providing the resourcing and support for them uh, uh, that don't go to your church. So the East 10th Street Church in North Carolina, for example, is just uh, having an open time for kids uh, to come to their building, but they created a campaign uh, that has been shared and shared over and over again in their community to let them know that uh, parents can use that resource. So that's a great idea to make sure you do that so people know that you're going to be able to do it. I'd also say don't forget the teachers during this time. Not only are parents having to adjust to a new reality of teaching their kids at home, a lot of teachers are going to be teaching in person for some students and online for others. And they've got a tremendous need to be served during this time. Uh, and so your church can reach out in a special way just to the teachers. And so you can provide them uh, gift cards uh, or even uh, 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 the, the protective masks. They, they're going to be wearing a mask every day, all day, and so you can, uh, you uh, for in-person teaching, so you can provide that. Uh, one, uh, the Fayetteville Church is providing survival kits, not only for teachers, but for parents. Uh, that includes fun stuff like stress balls and chocolate and uh, and gift cards for coffee or, or whole things of coffee beans uh, and things like that to make the teachers and the parents know that they're loved during this time and taking care of their kids. Uh, and uh, you can also think about what are the teachers that have kids, what are they doing? If they're having to teach from school, but their kids might be staying home, is there a way that you could partner and say, uh, just the teacher's kids can come to your, your church building before they go to school? Uh, and so Woodland Hills Church is doing that. That's a great idea. Uh, probably the last idea is the New Life Christian Church in uh, Chantilly, Virginia, and at their campus in in Linton Hall is instead of having parents and kids come to their building, instead that they are strategically trying to find people in neighborhoods that can open their home to the families in their neighborhood, not only associated with their church, but also that they know that those, the parents might be going to work and that they've got kids at home and provide a neighborhood connection uh, that your home is the place that can be uh, where their kids would get dropped off. They'd have a lot of social interaction with other kids, but also uh, that they would, um, the parents would be confident that the kids are getting the work done at the same time. And so it's a tremendous opportunity that we have uh, to be uh, strategizing on how we can serve our communities at this time, that every uh, crisis creates an opportunity. And so uh, we've, we also have a worksheet that was in that 35 minute pop up webinar with uh, 12 questions that you can kind of work through with your team on figuring out what's the best thing that your church could do during this time to serve your community. And so uh, there'll be a link to the PDF that you can download and work your, your team through to figure out what's best for your church to do during this time. So we hope, we hope this helps you uh, to begin to strategize and really see a vision for how you could be reaching out to community in a special way during this time. And uh, if you have questions, please email us from this uh, 10 in 10 video and check out our uh, webinar page on YouTube. Just search for Waypoint 55 and you can subscribe to our webinar channel to get these kinds of videos as they are posted. Have a great day.